It is a matter of life and death, and in just a matter of minutes, seconds even, Narcan, as it's often called, can reverse the effects of opioids even in overdose patients. First responders can have up to an hour to save a patient who has overdosed on heroin. In the case of fentanyl, though, it can be just minutes. The Biden administration is now looking to get Narcan closer to where illicit drugs are taken so it can save lives. That's the hope. We have got two guests on this tonight. Lou Ortenzio was a physician who battled his own opioid addiction, and he is now heads up the Clarksburg Mission in West Virginia with the Clarksburg Mission in West Virginia. And also Sheriff Mark Lamb is from Pinell County, Arizona. Uh, gentlemen, I appreciate you both being here tonight on such an important topic and such a dangerous drug, uh, fentanyl. What we have seen this drug do in the last decade uh, has just been horrific. Uh, Lou, I want to begin with you. And as I said, you've seen both sides of this. And I want to start with a pretty uh, basic question, but are people taking fentanyl on purpose, given how deadly and dangerous and scary this drug is? I mean, is, is this a drug people are taking for recreational purposes? I mean, certainly some people take it on accident by having it admixtured in a bunch of different drugs, but people do seek it out. Fentanyl, surprisingly, it's striking to me that fentanyl has become a drug of choice because it is so potent. And, uh, and and really, uh, someone who struggles with substance use disorder with addiction just can't stop. Um, and if they don't, as I did in my own experience, stopping taking opiates in any form, um, prescription pain medication, Oxycontin, um, uh, heroin, fentanyl, if you don't take it, you get sick. With fentanyl, you get sick real fast when it wears off. So people seek this out. Um, and it's just absolutely tragic because it's overpowering and no one can estimate the amount of fentanyl that they're taking. And as people's tolerance wax and wanes, um, it, it's absolutely deadly. We've seen our community devastated by fentanyl overdoses. Yeah. Uh, three, three last week in our community, tragic, young people, mm -hmm. the balloon of the generation. No, I mean, it's, it is just, it's the worst of the worst. And when you look at the numbers, I mean, they're skyrocketing, Lou, um, from 2008, uh, there were, in this is synthetic opioid deaths, there were about 2,300. And in 2020, just a couple of years ago, we were up to 56,000 opioid deaths. What is, what's driving this um, rate going up so fast? Certainly the pandemic made it difficult because people were isolated. There was so much anxiety. Uh, and, and so that drove the, the sewer and overdose deaths. But just the number of people who get addicted, we have a lot of trauma. A, a lot, certainly in our area, we see children that grow up in broken homes with, with parents who have mental illness, parents have addiction, and we have traumatized people and we have family drug norms. So it, it's normal to use drugs to solve our problems. When I was a physician, there was a pill for every ill. The sad part is that that doesn't always the case and the side effects or horrific. I, once I got hooked on opioids, I couldn't stop. Um, it, it's just the nature of this beast. What was eventually the turning point for you? And um, you know, I, I realized I was way out of line, uh, and, and my office staff was frustrated with me. My coworkers were frustrated, um, and and on a confrontation. And also, I got saved. I realized that God had a better plan for my life, and and then I was able to get sober. But after getting sober, I, I got a federal bust in my office, and I, I had to convict, get convicted of two federal felonies. Hmm. Um, but I'm doing ministry work now. It's fabulous. I'm, I'm in the same community where I offended. I can, I can say I was an early contributor to the airport epidemic and prescribing, and I'm a, a casualty of it as I got into a, a pickle myself. But I give people hope. You know, people love me as a family doctor by the grace of God, and now they love me for trying to make a difference in our community. Yeah, well, that's a sobering wake-up call for you, but I appreciate that you've turned it around, and now you're, you're speaking on behalf of um, a solution to the problem because uh, it, is, it is multifaceted. Uh, thank you so much, Lou, for coming on tonight. Uh, let's bring in Sheriff Mark Lamb now because, Sheriff, you have seen um, – really the worst of the worst in terms of the people impacted and, and how we try to intercept this drug. Um, how is so much fentanyl getting into the United States right now? Well, it's coming through the southern border, Marnie. That's as simple as it is. We have a, we have a government whose policies are encouraging 
the cartels. They're giving the cartels, you know, basically carte blanche to bring to traffic as many humans and drugs in as possible. I know you asked the uh, doctor what was it, why we were seeing this increase. Well, the increase is coming from the cartels pushing even more and more product, more and more fentanyl every day. That's why fentanyl is the leading killer amongst Americans between the ages of 18 and 45. Over 100,000 deaths in the last year. Let me put it this way, Marty. If the cartels were to drop a bomb on one of our cities and kill 100,000 people, what would we do as a country? We went to war for 20 years over 9-11. Now think about it. Put it into perspective. They're killing over 100,000 civilian Americans every year. We know where it's coming from, yet we're failing to stop it. Yeah, Sheriff, but it's a supply and demand issue too, isn't it? I mean, part of the problem is you've got people in these American cities who want this drug. So it's coming across the border. It's coming from China through Mexico into the U.S. But people in America are taking it and they're dying. So how do we fix that? Well, you start at the southern border. You've got to start reducing the supply or you're going to only continue to have even more and more addicts. You're right. This is a problem that Americans are facing, and it's not easy to overcome once you get it. And now the cartels are lacing their, the heroin, the cocaine, the methamphetamines, the marijuana, the wax pens that the kids are using. All of it is having fentanyl now, and the cartels want you to be addicted the very first time that you use these products. And so, yeah, this is an epidemic for the American people, and the only way we're going to continue to start to, to address it and stop it is by stopping the flow of it into this country. Mm -hmm. But we're not. We're increasing the flow every day. They're producing these little pills. 40% um, of what we recover, the DEA here in Arizona says are, are lethal doses. This is scary for us in law enforcement because we're dealing with it on the front lines. And I also have to pick up the pieces for the families, the hundreds of families that die, that have a loved one die every day um, from this this dangerous drug. It's, it, these are poisonings, not overdoses. They're poisonings. A 15-year-old who takes a pill the first time, that is not an overdose. That's a poisoning. Yeah, I agree with you, Sheriff. I've interviewed moms and dads who have lost, um, lost their children to this drug. Um, I'm looking at some of those images we were just showing of the different ways that this drug is getting smuggled into the United States. I'm sure you've seen some crazy and wild things um, as you try to try to do your part to stop it. Yeah, we had a traffic stop not too long ago where we searched the car. We couldn't find the drugs. And then there was these three trays of food. We moved one of those trays of food and underneath it, we, it was a little heavy. So we scraped some of the food back and we found 227,000 M30 fentanyl pills in one traffic stop. Last year, my agency, in 2018, we had zero M30 fentanyl pill seizures. 2019, 677 pills. 2020, over 200,000 pills. Last year, we had over 1.2 million pills, and just in my agency alone, and I guarantee you we will far surpass that this year. That is scary for what is facing the American people. It is sickening, and it's unacceptable. Uh, Sheriff Mark Lamb, appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Marnie. God bless, and thank you for bringing light to this. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.